Hello everyone, we are here again to read By the Great Horn Spoon, Chapter 12, Bullwhip. Campfires along the river lit their way back to town. Carrying their shoes, the two partners were stuffed full of sow belly and beans, and between them they were richer by a thimble full of gold. Jack's feet ached from hours in the ice-cold mountain stream, but he was too elated to care. His face was dirty and his clothes were dirtier. Praiseworthy's white shirt was splattered with mud. His umbrella was in tatters. First thing tomorrow, said the butler, we'll purchase boots. If we had a tent like Pitch Pine Billy, Jack said, we wouldn't have to sleep in that old hotel. We could stay right at our claim. We don't have a claim, but we'll get one, won't we? Absolutely, and a tent. Why not? And a mule? He said we need a mule or burrow to go prospecting. A mountain canary for sure, said Praiseworthy. Jack tried to keep in step with his partner's long stride. Pitchpine Billy thinks you're my father. I heard him. I don't mind. Praiseworthy pulled at his ear. When he gets an idea fixed in his head, he refuses to have it removed. I tried often enough, but he meant no offense. None at all, said Jack, looking up. He liked Praiseworthy. He liked him especially as they swung along together, both barefoot and one as mud-splattered as the other. Partners were the next best thing to being related, he thought. Better maybe. A partner didn't take a hairbrush to you, even when you needed it. But there were times when he wished he had a father, hairbrush and all. They walked along from somewhere in the trees and shadows. They could hear the wheeze of miners' concerta. For days since the discovery of Aunt Arabella's picture in Praiseworthy's carpet bag, Jack had wondered about it. The moment had never seemed right to ask, but now the questions just tumbled out. Does Aunt Arabella know you've got her picture along? Praiseworthy shifted the pic to the other shoulder. Yes, yes, the picture, he said quietly. I've been meaning to give it to you. I have no right to it. No right at all. It's only a picture. You keep it. Jack shifted the shovel on his other shoulder. Why doesn't Aunt Arabella have a husband? What? I mean, she's beautiful, isn't she? Praiseworthy seemed positively embarrassed. Now see here, Master Jack, Jamoka Jack. Constance says Aunt Arabella was in love once, but he died, and women like that never get over it. They must, they get, excuse me, they just get to be old maids. Miss Constance should be spanked, Praiseworthy replied shortly. And then he changed the subject. First thing in the morning, I must see about getting my gold pan mended. I'll bet Aunt Arabella would marry you if you asked. Praiseworthy stopped as it struck, and then he began to laugh. Now that is nonsense, Master Jack. Stuff and nonsense. A woman like Miss Arabella marries a gentleman, not a butler. It simply isn't done. I wouldn't permit such a thing, not for a moment. Now, your dear aunt would be laughed out of Boston. Now let's hear no more of these fancies of yours. Come along. They resumed their stride, and Jack said no more. But Praiseworthy wasn't fooling him. No, sir. Praiseworthy hadn't carried off Aunt Arabella's picture. He would never do a thing like that. No, sir. Not Praiseworthy. Aunt Arabella had given him the picture, Jack thought. Yes, sir. And the more he thought about it, the more it pleased him. Soon, the coal oil lights of Hangtown could be seen through the trees. Praiseworthy stopped to put on his shoes, but Jack just carried his. As they came along the street, the men who sat and whittled stopped whittling. The standing and talking men stopped talking, and the coming and going men stopped coming and going. Jack had a sudden feeling that everyone was staring at them. What was wrong? Didn't they have their heads on straight? And then a voice said, there he is. That's him, all right. Praiseworthy and Jack kept walking. They passed the assay office and the cheap John auction store and the general merchandise. A cold feeling was creeping along Jack's neck. Maybe they're looking for somebody to hang, he whispered. Unlikely at this time of night, said Praiseworthy. But he was concerned. 
The men seem to be smiling, and in Hangtown, that might be a bad sign. When they reached the Empire Hotel, the porch loungers gazed at them in a kind of awe. A mutter of voices arose. Knock that outlaw 17 feet uphill. 19 feet, the way it was told to me. 19 feet and 11 inches. They measured it. Praiseworthy stopped in the doorway. He looked at Jack, who broke into a muddy smile, as if they had been saved from the limb of a tree. And then the butler turned, peering at the whiskered faces grinning in the yellow light from the hotel. A miner shifted the lump of chewing tobacco in his mouth and said, Stranger, you must have a fightin' arm like the butt end of a bullwhip. Pleased to have you in our town. Pleased to be here, Praiseworthy said, lowering the pick from his shoulder. But not under false colors, gentlemen. Allow me to explain. Hey, Bullwhip, where are you and the youngin' from? Boston, sir. Gentlemen, our good friend and traveling companion, Mr. Jonas T. Fletcher, appears to spread a grossly exaggerated account of what happened. You see, hold on, you calling him a liar? No, but, well, did you knock that road agent uphill or not? Yes, but, the miners began to chuckle and chewing tobacco went squirting in all directions. They had taken an immediate fancy to Praiseworthy, and one by one they picked up the nickname. How long you stay in, Bullwhip? Praiseworthy shouldered the pick. He gave up trying to explain. It seemed to him that every man in the diggings came became hard of hearing when he wanted to, and he'd had enough of that for one day. If they preferred a tall tale to the facts, let him have it. Bullwhip, you there. Exactly how far was it? Praiseworthy gave Jack a passing wink. As long as the citizens of Hangtown were determined to hang a reputation on them, it might as well be the best. Gents, he said. From where I was standing, it looked 23 feet at least. A miner swallowed his cud of tobacco. Oh, be joyful, he uttered. Come along, Jamoka Jack, said Praiseworthy, turning into the hotel. Jack felt a brand new smile reach across his face. Yes, sir. Bullwhip, he said. And that is the end of chapter 12. Come back tomorrow and we will read chapter 13, A Bushel of Neckties. See you guys later.